Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 252. Still sounds like a big number. Ever since we crossed 250, it feels like a very big number. I don't know why. Uh, it's February 23rd. Uh, we're doing the Wix Online Meeting. This is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, let's go ahead and get into what we're getting into today. Uh, if you're here, go ahead and say hi. Ron's here and he's reminded me for the second or third time about the pull request, which I have not forgotten about. I will get to that. Not here, but after here. Uh, what are we talking about today? We are gonna talk about Wix 4 release because well, that's what we're doing until we're done. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. We will do our issue tri uh, review and triage and then we'll leave the floor open for questions and comments. And uh, I don't think Ron will have to ask questions about anything because I already know that. And we have a Bert, Bert, welcome. Uh, anybody else go ahead and say hi. Let's see, let's go ahead and talk about Wix 4 release plan. Uh, we're in the middle of it. That's only because of the way I drew the picture. Uh, tomorrow is RC3, assuming today goes the way it's supposed to. Uh, uh, or I think today, <laughs> this timing goes the way it goes. Oh, we'll see. Um, yeah, that that's all I got. We're doing RC three. Uh, we've put RC four on the books for March twenty fourth. There is essentially enough change in uh, Wix RC three. We'll go ahead and walk through that in a minute. Um, to like demand, to require, to need, to suggest that we should have an RC4. Uh, after RC3 goes out, we'll see what kind of bugs uh, we get, what kind of bugs we fix, and to see how far after what we feel RC4 uh, might need for bake time. So we're going to be talking about that basically all the rest of next month on our way to Wix 4.0. Um, deep down, I am hoping that uh, we, RC4 is the last one, and we release Wix for shortly after that. Like, I don't know, April 5th? That would be kind of cool. April 1st. April 1st. <laughs> April 5th is a bigger day than April 4th, but or April 1st. Um, but I appreciate that. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's where we're at. That's what we're working to. Uh, I'm kind of like staring at this going, is there anything else to say? But we've probably said everything there is to say about that because we've talked about it uh so many times and uh, that's what we're doing all right so let's go ahead and move on to review triage things like that uh there's actually a whole bunch for us to talk about so bob you ready uh is there really a lot yeah i'm ready except yeah. if there's a lot if there's a lot then i'm not ready for that yeah so yeah i, I really should say just to like bob you know, instead of to the web, I should be like, Bob, you ready? Anyway, here we go. Um, there's a lot for where we want to be right now, I'd say. But That's let's fair. talk about it. Um, let's punish the people who open these bugs. Yeah, then there's that. So, um, <laughs> uh, add search capability inside uh, XML file. And I think this would be a wonderful thing for someone to finally implement. I feel like there's already a feature open for this. So this could maybe get duped to that. But um, yeah, it would be great if someone would do the work to have not only to have the complement to XML file and XML config to have, I don't know, XML read or whatever it ends up being called, search, XML search, I don't know, whatever we want to call it. Um, yeah, we just need search a design and a discuss about how it would work, what kind of language it would use, like, you know, how do you find the pass, XPath kind of things, probably, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's definitely not going into Wix 4, so I think we toss it with, uh, whip required and no milestone, right? No milestone? Yeah, no milestone. It's not okay. planned until someone says, hey, yes, they want to plan it. I know he said he wants to do it, but he needs to come out and say, yeah, I'll do the whip and put it into the no milestone. Then we can put it into a future milestone that does not exist, but we'll talk about that soon enough. All right, whip required. Yep, whip required. I think that's the probably that's the the biggest next step is to kind of like lay out how exactly is this going to work. So there we go. Okay, now I'd like to point out really quickly that the next one, two, three, four issues were all opened by Bob, and the last one is opened by me. Mine is done though. Um, and so let's go ahead and jump into seven, two, two, three. Bob, take it away. Sorry. Um, 
you not. you go in opposite order that I do. Oh. Um, so <clears throat> all of these bugs came about uh, from my work on the documentation. I call this documentation-driven development, where I go to document something and I go, oh, this sucks. Um, sometimes you know I might find a bug and I can just go ahead and fix that. Other times I find something a, a little bit more in depth. Um, this is an example of one of those. Started working on the the documentation for Quiet Exec, all the Quiet Exec, Silent Exec custom actions, and oh my, they're you know um, uh, they're a bit of a mess because of the introduction of platform specific custom actions. Uh, you know, in Wix three, there's only one Wix Quiet Exec. Well, that's not exactly true. There are several Wix Quiet Execs, but you know, generally you can pick one and stick with it, and you don't have to worry about the platforms in Wix 4 you do because all of the custom actions including quiet exec are available in x86 flavor x64 flavor and the exotic arm 64 flavor uh, furthermore quiet exec is weird because you know it works for both immediate and deferred modes it works off of reading a property and it's just, it's awkward to deal with. And I'm like, well, we can solve all of these problems by uh, by writing, you know, a custom element in the util compiler extension that would, you know, let you use like one element to take care of, you know, picking your right picking the right platform and uh, scheduling the custom action with the right command line. And that was always the case. We probably should have this a long time ago. This could have been in you know, Wix 2, yeah. Mm, three. Yeah, Wix 4 extensions. makes it a little bit worse because of the, the platform-specific custom actions. But yeah, the, 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 otherwise it's yeah the same as, as in Wix 3. So... It's, so I think this should be a milestone list up for grabs issue. Feature. Yeah, absolutely. A feature request, yeah. yeah. Probably needs at least a small whip. Yeah. To talk about all the, because there's a lot of attributes on this thing, I assume. It's a lot of um, little configuration pieces, right? Ideally, no. Oh, okay. Um, it's, not, it's, not really that, it's not really that hard. Okay. No, it's not hard. It's, I, it's definitely not hard. I mean, but even the, so part of it, part of why I like the idea of, of adding compiler extensions, like, you know, I did for some of the other custom actions, is that it allows us to, you know, do a better job of hiding how some of these things work. Yeah. Exactly. Quite exact is, you know, just, yeah, it, it's a simple thing. But to set it up requires some scaffolding, and we can hide the scaffolding. Yeah. All right. So this is actually not a bad one if someone wants to get started on one of these. Could like, so a lot of the parts are already documented, so it's mostly focused on the compiler extension part of it. So all right. Yeah. Okay. Future feature request. Um. Moving on. So that does not stay in four. Neither one of these are staying in four. Moving on to seven two two seven. Yeah, Build again. Suffix. I was. Um, this also came from writing or trying to write the quite exact doc. Um, the platform specific custom actions all have a yeah, suffix that you can rely on. Um, and the the suffix is directly related to the architecture that you're building for, which is available in the preprocessor you know, system variable build arch. Well, you can't use build arch directly, so you end up with this nice little block of, of conversion preprocessor statements. And I'm like, God, this is kind of ugly, and you need it everywhere. And we could say, oh, put it in an include file. I'm like, wait, wait, the preprocessor, we own that. Um, so my suggestion and what I've implemented is a new preprocessor variable that originally I called build out suffix. And Rob's correctly pointed out that the, uh, it could just be more generic 
wouldn't necessarily have to be for the custom action suffix. Um, so I re-implemented it, called it build arch short. And that is available in a pull request that is ready to go. If the collected wisdom says that this is something we should do. It makes sense. We could then also use it in the cust in all the extensions, right? Because the extensions have this sort of little mapping in there if defs already or in their um, include files, the way that they're being built, right? Um, yeah, there's there's one version of that. Right. That's shared among all the extensions. But yes, you're right. The um, I, Off the top of my head, I, yeah, there's no reason that at least the Wix authoring side could uh, could be simplified. It makes sense to me. There has been times when I wish I had the X64 to stick on things. The hard part is that sometimes you want it lowercase, sometimes you want it uppercase, but I guess you'll have it between build arch and other arch. And then that just leaves the, the arm is arm all caps, Pascal caps, all lowercase. Um, but the uh, short makes when sense. When I checked, it was, everything was uppercase. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's just looking at all the part mutations of these oh, yeah, that you could yeah, have. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, it makes sense to me. It, it probably will help. It'll definitely help people trying to directly reference actions, right? Yes. Yeah. The, again, came from quiet exec, but it applies to any of those, um, what I like to call naked custom actions that are out there. There are very few of them because of this problem. Um, but you know, the, so this is an example too of like the, um, uh, yeah, Wix UI custom actions. Right now you are tied into, you have you have the same problem where you have to pick a suffix um, if you're doing a custom UI. Well, this helps solve that problem. Yeah, so it's kind of a baby step or a temporary bridge until we decide yeah, how to solve yeah. this problem more fundamentally. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. I will uh, submit the pull request. All right. 7228. Isn't it someone else's turn? No, you open these, man. I know, I know. Yeah. Um, oh, look, more about Quiet Exec. <laughs> Which doc um, was Bob trying to write? Uh, well, that's the problem. I wasn't trying to write that much doc, but every step of the way, I ran into some issue. Um, the, I mean, you can read the blurb. In Wix 3, there's a Wix Quiet Exec 64 that is a 32-bit custom action. Ignore the name. It's a 32-bit custom action that uh, knows how to undo all of the the WoW redirection stuff and therefore get access to the 64-bit file system. This is handy, you know, because normally a 32-bit Wix Quiet Exec call would not see the the true 64-bit paths under you know like program files or uh, windows system 32. we turn all that stuff off in this 32-bit custom action so that you can run a 64-bit process in a 64-bit directory but now we have 64-bit custom actions so if you're in a 32-bit package and you need to call a 64 oh wait why would you do that Probably you are in a 64-bit package needing to call a 64-bit um, process via Wix Quiet Exec, and you could just use the 64, the X64 or ARM64 version of the custom action. Um, I think that's all we need to do. I don't think it's necessary for us to continue to ship a Wix Quiet Exec 64 that is 32-bit on x86 and is also 64-bit on x64 and ARM64. Yeah, but I waffled a little bit about whether that's you know truly accurate. Um, I also wondered, is, is this the kind of thing we should not be changing at this point? Um, so I opened the issue. 
uh, as far as I can tell, there's no, you know, it simplifies the doc. I won't have to, you know, mention Wix Quiet Exec 64 and, you know, sit there and go, wait, how do I explain why you need to do this? Because I don't think you do. One of the downsides of documentation driven development. 32 bit packages probably can't contain 64 bit custom actions. I don't think that's true. There's nothing that checks that. Oh, see, now, now you're making me wonder. So that's the one way this would be useful. If you have a 32 bit package, cause you want to be universal per se, but then when you're installing, you run a different command to, because if you're on a 64 machine, then you want to run, reach into the 64 bit world mm -hmm. just enough to, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm reaching, this is as far as I can get to why you might need something like this. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 that's, that's absolutely possible. Um, but 32 bit is slowly slipping away, right? Well, there's no Windows 11 6, 32 bit. Right. Is there a Windows 10 32 bit? There was, oh. I think they stopped at a certain point, but I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. All right. My vote would be that we uh, kick this can down the road, another release. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we don't have to go try to figure out if we actually need to solve that problem that I just raised, if that yep. is a real thing. Um, Cause at some point maybe we just cut all x86. I, that sounds crazy, but maybe. Um, and and I don't know how much doc you have to do on it because <laughs> it's kind of uh, like well, this edge yeah, again, case. My, the, the biggest question is, do I feel the need to explain why you would use this and then stumble along with, you know, I don't know. Uh, I could just literally add reason TBD and just go from there. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do TBD. It's just like, you know, this exists for an extreme edge case. And if you need it, you know you need it. And if you don't know that you need it you don't need it and if you know you need it please tell us why yeah <laughs> there's a little bit of that too uh yeah. and we think you don't need this so if you find out that you actually did let us know yeah I, I, that's i think the extent of the documentation i do for it yep man it's kind of strange to think about cutting x86 well to be clear you're the only person who's done that so far yeah but con i mean contemplating it because x86 has always been the the universal um, yeah, yeah. But there, oh, is there 64 bit on ARM 64? Is there a 64 bit emulator? X64 on ARM 64? On Windows 11, yeah. On Windows yeah. 11, yeah. That, that's... Windows 11 has 32 bit and 60, x86 and x64 emulation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's interesting. Interesting world. All right. Wix4 should support .NET Framework 481. Yeah. That would uh, be great. Before we move off 7228, how oh, do we yeah. want to? milestone this is this be future yeah let's put it in future because i think we should yeah i okay. i think we should like kill it probably i all right wix4 should support uh sorry 7239 wix4 should support framework 481 yeah yeah yep um again doing documentation this time i got frustrated with Quite exact, so I moved on to <laughs> the NetFX extension, um, where I discovered that we have, you know, support. We still have support going back to, you know, .dot one L. Wow! Um, Look at us. <laughs> it will not be documented. Oh, okay. Probably reasonable. It might exist. I'm not going to. No, no. Um, I I have enough carpal tunnel. I'm not going to go through all that. Um, we support through .NET Framework 4.8. Uh, 4.8.1 was released a while ago to add ARM64 support, so it's you know, reasonably important. Um, today we're not doing it. I figure we should do it before we ship Wix 4. Yeah, that'd be great. Especially if, as rumored, 4.8.1 is like the last thing we're, the last framework release, quote unquote, we're gonna see. They'll continue to patch, but... Okay. They now support ARM64, so there's really not a whole lot going on there. Not it. Not it. 
<laughs> Isn't opening the bug enough work for me? <laughs> uh, I'm doing all the releases, so I'm going to be busy. Thank you, Bob. Everybody's out there. Say thank you, Bob. Even if you he can't hear you, say thank you, Bob, because he's doing the work that he doesn't want to do. But it is a good thing for us to have done. So if you haven't, say thank you, Bob. We're moving on to um, 7241. Support multi-targeting project references. Uh, so uh, we, if you remember at the end of RC2, was that where the target framework? Yeah, the big target framework. Uh, fix when I'm fixing the project references, all that kind of stuff. Um, and in, in so the project references to .NET Core apps and target frameworks, all that stuff would work because we had lots of bugs coming out of those. Things seem to be working very well. All the people that had issues, I've all said everything's working. So that's great. The issue then you hit is that uh, there's this multi-targeting thing that they've made big in uh, .NET Core, but new MS build that when I sat down and was trying to solve it, it ended up creating these ginormous uh, combinatorics of project of project references you had to do to create all these different um, to set all the appropriate target frameworks. And then I realized if you had runtime identifiers in there, it explodes again. And then it, I kind of went, oh, this is really bad. So can we do something that makes us work well? And uh, created this idea of adding to project references in Wix a target frameworks. Here it is. That's what I was looking for. The ability to say target frameworks and you can provide a list along with the runtime identifiers. And what we will do is explode out your project references and all the different combinatorics necessary to make that happen. It's not combinatorics, that's the wrong word. Um, all the different <laughs> versions or flavors of that that you have to do. And then while I was there, I realized I could do the same thing for configurations and platforms in the same way because we have a lot of this kind of code in Wix itself, which means anybody that's dealing with multi platform type things might have this, maybe less, certainly platform builders do it, but normal people probably just normal projects, probably just build one package and get all those architectures. But this is very nice if you wanna include multiple architectures and it simplifies so much. In fact, I started adding it to some of our extensions and a lot of complexity went away and things just started working better all up. So uh, these are a couple things you can now add to uh, project references inside Wix that will then create uh, this many project references. For example, these two lines create this many project references and at the same time, set a bind pass to everything so that you can specify the appropriate architecture and platform and everything that you need. Um, and it solves all the wackiness that you have when trying to, the big one being when you're trying to reference a multi-targeting CS project with run, multiple runtime identifiers in it, things work much better across the board there. Um, and so I just wanna bring that up here so people knew that this was coming in in RC3 as kind of a finishing of the RC2 work around project references, make those work across all of these target frameworks so that they can try the it and let us know that it works. Do all those references uh, participate equally in schedule? in uh, project build scheduling. Sorry, that I was trying to come up with the actual precise question. Um, how does this work for multi-proc builds? It, the, exactly as you expect it to. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, you, you, it, it's quite nice, actually. The builds are very nice with this, um, especially given what we used to do um, with all the mapping things out. And there's some funky syntaxes in there too. Set property and target framework equals target framework. Like the value is target framework equals, and then inside there you put target framework equals the value you want. It's like right, right, right. the syntax is goofy. So it just handles all that kind of stuff. We're able to wrap all that up, hide it for you, and you can now just go, whew, I need all these architectures, please. And it just works. I didn't get to all the extensions. Um, I did a couple of the more complex extensions to see that it would work, and it really was better. Um, so. I'm slowly getting to the point where we could do MS build for all the extensions where it's just right. one traversal project that references everything, uh, build all that out and then have to run tests afterwards. So that's kind of the downside is that they're not as isolated to each other. I don't know. 
but that's the Wix build itself. Um, with these changes, things have gotten refined enough that it's really starting to just kind of work, uh, which is nice. After all the problems we've had getting native code and C sharp code and all the mixes and all that kind of stuff working, I think we're really, really getting there. So anyway, I want to kind of bring that up as something, and then we'll talk about it. I want to talk about that a little more because it, I'm hoping it can help solve a lot of the things that people have had out there popping up in various ways. So that was the thing for triage. Ta -da. So can we talk about what you did with the whip there where you just created an issue instead of what we used to do? Yep. So this is the, uh, the given, I had a huge debate with myself when uh, creating whips originally of whether to have an issue in GitHub or actually it was an issue in the old issue tracker. So it was long enough that back or so either create an issue that tracks the item and then write it somewhere else uh the document somewhere else like on wixtoolset.org or to put the whole issue in or put the whole whip inside the issue and after the behavior i'm seeing of people searching the whips and getting into them and thinking that they are the final documentation or when some of them are proposals and some of them aren't even implemented, I realized that putting them on the Wix toolset.org site is not giving me the user behavior that I wanted. So I took the one that was creating the most trouble and brought it back as an issue, kind of got it worked out. And then I tried this one as an issue, basically flipping the coin the other way and trying to bring issues in here and seeing how it goes. And so far it's been working the same. Um, so then the question is going through and pulling all the whips back and editing their issue, their tracking issues to put the content in here to pull them off of the Wix toolset.org thing. That's a later thing. I wanted to try these before I got, <laughs> before I started doing the work to bring all the other ones back here. To be fair, we are putting the whips under documentation. So I doubt people are searching for whips. They're searching yeah, Google yeah, and what? Yeah, right, right, right. They're they're searching Google. They're finding the doc the documentation, and they're treating it just like documentation. And I went through the website. <laughs> like some of these aren't even implemented. Like they're good proposals. We should have them. They should be out there, but yeah. they're not done. And so people are like, wait, hey, I try to do this and it doesn't work, and and be like, uh, yeah, no, um, okay. So, and the the status is completely disconnected from. Uh, on that website is disconnected from what could be a GitHub. Like there's all these little things that I knew would be issues, but it really was the user behavior that kind of tipped me over going, nope, picked wrong. Unfortunately, we did a lot of these already. So have to do work to undo the picking wrong. And that's the problem when you flip a coin and you guess wrong the first time. So, so how are you expecting that person with the XML issue to, what do you expect him to do when uh, they create a whip? That's a good point. So I need to go update the the original whip that says how to create them. So that will probably stay on the Wix uh, tool set side, probably near the development um, section. And it will be, please enter your uh, whip here. Now, should they create a new issue or can they edit that one issue? Um, it's going to be, I want to create an issue template for whips. So it could be like, hey, I want to create an issue. Here's a whip. Let me go through that. Oh, yeah. Um, and then it kind of turns into, uh, do they, can they like retroactively apply a template to an already open issue? If so, that would work great. If they can't, then they get to choose, do they want to edit that issue and put the template in there themselves, or do they want to create a new issue and dupe the other one back? I don't know that I'm going to have a strong opinion either way. Should they change the issue that they opened or should they create a new one? And that one in particular, cause the feature request straight up, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see, uh, where we go from there. So that was one of the nice things about having a separate document, document be separate issue, change the issue into the whip, go write it somewhere else. Um, but editing an issue inside uh, GitHub is, you know, straightforward and you get the whole, you know, edit history. So I was like, yeah, it's fine. Let's do that. So the answer is he will be one of our first guinea pigs of taking an issue and turning it into a whip. And do we create a new one or do we edit that one in place? And I'm going to be like, eh, whichever he wants to do, honestly whichever feels easiest for him. Um, and I need to go create the template. And my plan is to go do lots of issue template work next week after RC3 is out. Okay. So, cool. That triage can 
go. And we are done with the triage things here. So I'm going to go over here. Let me hit refresh. Um, that's still marked triage. Okay. And that will go away. All right. So if we go look at here in the issues, what came in, uh, net four, eight, one, and Bob will bring in the build arch suffix, which now is called build arch short. Um, that'll show up in the issues. Those are the two issues for now. Um, so on that front, Bob, are you going to, you're going to get the build art short today, like committed today? Yeah. Okay. So that'll make four, three. Uh, what about then four, eight, one? Is that a today or is that later? <laughs> RC four, basically. Is it today or RC three or tomorrow later RC four? Uh, probably later. Okay. Probably so RC4. That, all right. I will, I need to create the project for RC4 anyway. So, um, okay. we'll do that. And that'll be the first and only issue to start in RC4. Woo. All right. So on that note, I wanted to take a look at just a quick spin through the things that were grouped under, um, RC3. So these are the bug fixes, changes, um, other issues that we dealt with in the RC3 timeframe. There are 28. Oh, I don't have the RC4. Can I copy this? Maybe I can. Let's see if I can copy this. Open a new tab and change this to four. Will that do the right thing? I think that's the milestone that was closed. Yeah, so that had 35. So I think this was RC2. These namings aren't great. I need to switch to milestones. Next time, next time. Anyway, so this 35 was RC2. What we've done in RC3 is 28, uh, 30, I guess, in the end. A number of these were uh, discussion items. And in general, as I went poking through this list, uh, a lot of them were much smaller fixes, important fixes, but little mistakes that had snuck through. Sometimes, you know, two letter changes, one liners, you know, five liners. So relatively small changes across the space, which is good. Um, and, and I bring this up as a discussion point, mostly as a, hey, so how is Wix 4 doing? And the it feels like the issues that we are hitting are trending down, are getting simpler, are um, going in the right direction. 30 is still you know plenty interesting and there are enough things in this space to say that it's possible that we're going to see some more things, hopefully not larger than this in the RC4 timeframe. But right now, all we're going to see in RC4 is uh, an addition to add 481.NET framework, which is just a, yeah, we should do that. So that says that it looks pretty good. Things are looking like we're going the right direction. And... Um, I, I, we're just trying to get to whatever done means. It does mean that if you are using Wix 3, uh, you should try using Wix 4. If you're not on the latest build of Wix 4, you should be trying the latest build of Wix 4. It is uh, time for us to be finishing this. Everybody should be on it. And so that we can know, have a good feel for uh, these are the issues that are in Wix 4. And these were the set we chose to fix. And some of them got punted. For example, this quiet exec and all those kind of work. We could have done, we didn't. It's on to some future release, which is what we're gonna say about more and more things as we get down. But if you haven't tried Wix 4, now is the time. So going back, is there anything else people wanna talk about? Question, comments, stuff going on out there. Upgrade to Wix 4 RC3, it comes out tomorrow. Uh, maybe take the weekend, get prepared. Upgrade on Monday. Uh, start letting us know if there are any other things that we've hit. There's been some runtime things that are hard for us that if we don't have you know full test coverage across the extensions, like running the actual, all the things were not there. So running the actual extensions that you use, that helps us. Um, that's probably the biggest spaces. Um, and then just coverage of everything in the space is big. So uh, Wix covers a huge, huge surface area of uh, Windows, so there's lots of things for people to try their particular part that they use and let us know that it works. All right, I've been filling time. Uh, we are 
it is entirely possible I would be happy if we have one bug fix, if we just add .NET Framework 481 in Wix or RC4, that would be great. If that's the only thing uh, we might, I guess we could consider renaming RC4 RTM. I don't think that's what we would do. Um, and I don't think that we're only gonna get this one issue, but hey, that's it's somewhere in that hopefully zone of not many issues to find left. So, Today is the 23rd of February. Looking forward, that would put us at the 9th and then the 23rd. So if we stay on our regular meeting schedule, then we would have another meeting right before the 24th, and that seems about right. So come back in two weeks, see how things are going inside RC3 and what work is going to be done in RC4, and then move on from there. Does that sound right, guys? Sounds right. All right. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. Two weeks from now, we will be back. That means March 9th, we'll be back. We'll review how RC3 is going, how things are going, if what work is being done in RC4. And uh, yeah, that's the plan. So two weeks from now, 9.30 PST again. And I tried to fill. I don't see any of the questions. So it seems pretty straightforward. That's the kind of things that we got going on. So two weeks from now, We'll do all again, and uh, we will be talking about RC3. You guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.